I will come to you with an olive branch and say, George Clooney was not the worst part of Batman and Robin. <laughs> yes, he was not. Bat nipples. <laughs> Bat nipples. <laughs> How about some weird news? The weird news. weird news. Let's get into the weird. Weird news. Uh, so the headline for this uh, article here is called Walk of Shame. A presumably humiliated possum ran off in late October after three Pennsylvania men posted photos on social media of themselves giving it beer and kissing it. The Pennsylvania State Game Commission was unamused by the antics of Michael Robert Tice, 18, David Mason Snook, 19, and Morgan, or, I don't know, <laughs> it's not important, and charged them on November 2nd with unlawful possession of wildlife and disturbing wildlife. According to this news source, Tice kissed and held the animal while Snook poured beer on its head and into its mouth. Uh, unsurprisingly, the men could not be reached for comment. <laughs> well, what about the possum? Did they reach the possum for comment? Sounds like that possum has a story to that, tell. <laughs> you know what that, that story reminds me of? Nope. Uh, a few <laughs> years ago, there had been a dead raccoon, I believe, on the streets of London that uh, no one cleaned up for several days, even though it was I reported. I remember this. And, and people so like great. made a memorial for There's it memorial. around it. Nice. And like it became Twitter famous. <laughs> they left. Until they cleaned it up. They left flowers yeah. and stuffed animals and pictures. That, that sort of, you know, that sort of reminded me of that. <coughs> but um, I don't know what on earth would possess someone to pick up a possum. <laughs> they have teeth. Well, they're, they're very bitey once they wake back up. When you, when you pick up a possum by the tail, most of the time it's pretty, I mean, it's not, they're never really docile, but it's going to play possum, uh -huh. so to speak. It's going to just kind of be like, yeah, I died. Don't, don't touch just me. Just leave me alone. Yeah. My, my question is, how did they go from picking it up to cradling it and kissing it? Without having their faces bitten, it was playing possum. It was a possum, right? Yeah, it was yeah. possum. Well, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and clarify. I grew up going to a ranch every summer and helping out there, and I've I've been around someone when they pick up a possum. They they act dead for a few minutes, but once they're aware that you're gonna mess with them beyond that, they become kind of vicious. I don't know how they got to that point unless they gave it beer beforehand and it was a little drunk. Look, <laughs> everyone wants to feel pretty every once in a while. <laughs> Maybe the possum wanted to take some good Snapchat pictures. Yeah. The, the possum just wanted to feel loved wow. and it did. And it, had, it went home and it was like, dudes, you would not believe the night that I had. <laughs> it was off the hizzy. <laughs> you did not just say hizzy. Yeah, is his well, with an O at the beginning of it? Oh, as as it, long as it wasn't doing a solid O. Yeah, as long as it wasn't making duck lips in the selfies that night, I it's okay. So here's <laughs> here's another quick um, related because it involves animals uh, in Darmstadt, Germany. I'm terrible at pronouncing things, by the way. So police detained a 19 year old man on November 7th, after they noticed, quote, a significant bulge in his trousers. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was illegal. I had that I problem all the time. You know, that's profiling. <laughs> profiling is and wrong. And profiling is wrong. Yep. <laughs> oh, uh, it turns out he was carrying a baby python in his pants. Oh, my gosh. Is that a python in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> I think this is how some porn start. <laughs> So the unnamed man was carrying on a loud, drunken argument with another man when police were called. Officers took the man and the snake to the police station, where the snake was put in a box, and the authorities had to consider whether the, quote, non-species appropriate transport <laughs> could be a violation of animal protection laws. So they're like, dude, it's, we don't care that you had a snake in your pants. <laughs> We but just care how you were carrying it. But snakes have rights too. <laughs> that and reminds me of something. Was PETA involved? If was PETA involved, I, this sounds like something PETA know. would have been involved. I don't so, know. Is, is PETA in Germany? I don't 
don't know. So this reminded Keelan of something. This is this is gonna date me, just so you know. But Arsenio Hall, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's old. Bobcat Goldthwait, they say. Oh name? yeah, yeah, Goldthwait. When he came on the Arsenio Hall show. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes. Did y'all, did y'all, have y'all seen we that? We just had this conversation yeah. the other day. We just had this conversation. So he, he's out there talking to him, being interviewed for ten minutes, and then finally randomly stands up. Unzips his pants and pulls a live snake out of his pants oh. on the air, and Arsenio jumps up in his chair, freaks out. Yeah, it was oh. classic. It was yeah. I would, I just would like to say I cannot think of anything closer to hell on earth <laughs> than having a snake in my pants. <laughs> well, uh, Happy is not one. <laughs> not a fan of no. snakes. Waka waka. No, waka, no waka, snakes. Waka. Snakes can just. Go away. <laughs> I do not like them. He does not like them here or there. He does not like them anywhere. That's what I feel about spiders. Snakes don't bother me. Spiders, though. So, I, I so you're die. like Ron Weasley. Yes. Why does it have yes. to be spiders? Yes. Why couldn't it be full of the butterflies? So here's a question that comes from the Ask Reddit website. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I thought this would be a really interesting topic because it involves gaming and Mm -hmm. it's just it's a really unique idea if the gaming industry did covers like the music industry what games would you like to see so it'd be like games made by by a different studio than the one they were made right like it in Mm. in the spirit of yeah i don't think valve has put out a game that we've gone oh that sucks yeah no i don't mean i don't think it means like sucks but it's like you have a great song no no somebody makes a cover of it it's like a different, different take, a different style it's of like art. Yeah. Cover so, a game. Yeah, well, my point being that I would like to I've, see some of the games that I yes. felt like, like that were indie sort of games that could have probably been better. I feel like if Valve took them under their wing and did a cover of it, you know. Uh, oh, I get what you're saying. That would be. I misunderstood. Yeah. I, I've actually thought about this before. I've actually mm-hmm. thought about this. I would love to see Bethesda, specifically Bethesda, take the original Doom Mm-hmm. And remake it in the style of Fallout or of um, Skyrim. Mm-hmm. I think that would be amazing to have Doom as like this open world sandbox kind of adventure. That would be good. Mm-hmm. I have actually have not played the new Doom. Have you played it? No. Mm-hmm. Have you? And I know it, it. I have a feeling it probably has a little bit more tongue in cheek than anything else because it's it's Doom. You know, it's trying to make fun of that ridiculous over the top gore from the early nineties. But you're right. I mean, I think that uh, taking it seriously and doing a real good job doing at something it, yeah, really yeah. Good. would be really cool. But see, the thing is, though, is Bethesda's always got, uh, you know, it, as serious, I mean, as Fallout and, and the Elder Scrolls series really were, Skyrim, or sorry, um, Bethesda has a real knack of doing things kind of tongue in cheek. And mm-hmm. they'll add those little Easter eggs mm-hmm. in there that unless you're like a true gamer, you're, you're not going to know about them or you're not going to mm-hmm. find them. So to see Doom with that kind of an attitude, I think would be amazing. I'd like to see Rockstar Games do like a Golden Eye. Mm. Like that was one of my favorite, like uh, in 64, was that, that mm. was what it was on, games to play. But like I really would like to see like, you know, in the sort of GTA style where you're playing a spy game. That would be cool. You that know, would be cool. Yeah. sort of like Golden Eye. Another one I think would be fun would be um, something like Rockstar Games doing a version of uh, Super Mario Brothers, kind of like Super Mario Brothers meets GTA, mm-hmm. where, you know, it, you, you know. Instead of crushing the turtle, like, you steal it and you ride it. <laughs> you ride it. Well, <laughs> since, since Valve can't count to three, right? <laughs> how about Gearbox does Portal 3? Oh, oh yeah. Yes. See, I was thinking I would love to see something like, like, one of the Bethesda RPGs, Fallout, Sky, oh. uh, Elder Scrolls, something like that, done in in the Borderlands style. Oh yeah, that really would cool. be um, really cool. Yeah, you, know, you get you get those <laughs> the uh, the raiders, you know, in the in Fallout, mm-hmm. you know, voiced like the psychos, you know, <laughs> um, that would be never that would should be have come here. But I I bet Rocksteady, they're the ones that did the the. The Batman games, the Arkham Asylum, and all oh, yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure they could do some amazing things with with some some games. Although I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I would like to see a Lego version 
of the Half-Life games. That would be fun. That would be oh, fun. Yeah. Or that a Lego version fun. of the Portal games would be fun, too. Lego Portal. A about? lot of Valve games remade in the Lego sort of, like they've done the Lego Batman and they've done the Lego Star Wars and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of those Valve games would be a lot of fun as that Lego would be games. Cool. But I just imagine a tiny little Lego Gordon Freeman running around with his uh, <laughs> with his crowbar, crowbar. and his gravity <laughs> gun, uh, and, gravity gun and just having a blast in Lego world where like he shoots things, barrels with his gravity gun and it just breaks into all those little lego pieces mm. it's great that would be hilarious though that would be great this reminds me i know i'm changing gears again but have you seen the the season premiere i think it was season premiere of bob's burgers this season no, no. It's either the first one or the second one oh so they good. did it where every single scene was drawn by somebody different you were telling me about fan that art. yeah it was, it's every all scene fan was art. all fan art it was it's crazy. amazing it was crazy and there were times that it was a little disturbing, yeah. and there were times when it was a little bit like, eh? but it was the coolest thing that I've ever seen. And it's like everybody's different is, take. So many artists different take on the same vision. That is so neat that you know they're willing to take that fan input mm-hmm. and do something, mm-hmm. do something with cool it. with it. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. I was looking at a thing earlier today where about Supernatural and Supernatural's two hundredth episode. 10 years they've been going. They did an episode that was a musical based on the supernatural books from that are inside this universe. Yeah. It, it's it's extremely meta. It's it's extremely fan service. All right. Oh, but yeah. it it was it's one of the greatest things. There is no other show I really feel like plays to the fans more than Supernatural because they take those things, those little theories and stuff and work them in uh, because they've created this universe where there's books written about the characters and stuff because they've done that. They And there's conventions and stuff within the universe in the show. They're able to play with those like fan theories and stuff and sort of uh, able to address some of those things on air. It's it's a lot of fun to see that. But so it's it's great to see companies who are willing to bring the fans in in mm-hmm. different ways, and, and that's neat. Yeah. Well, here's something I stumbled upon uh, a little bit ago, and actually, it's funny. The other topic I have to discuss uh, on this episode is directly related to finding this, but we'll we'll get to that in a minute. This is a list titled The 20 Worst Fantasy and Sci-Fi Films in the Last 10 Years. (laughs) (laughs) So... You know, you know uh, let's let's first. just do a quick rundown of these. Uh, number twenty is Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen. Now, I'm not sure which one this is. If it's the second one, <laughs> I gotta look it up. It now. it absolutely was terrible. I, maybe, I, I don't think know which one was uh, Dark one. Side of the Moon. There was, or that's the, the third one, I think. Okay, third one was um, the Dark Side one. The, yeah, but uh, has one. have has anybody else seen that one? Uh, we've seen all of them, yeah. I think. Well, all but the and newest one. Newest one. Okay. Yeah, the 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 night something night. The the only one of the Transformers movies that I was not into was the one that didn't have Shia LaBeouf in it. So I don't know. Revenge of the Fallen is the second one. Yeah, it's okay. the second. So one. Revenge yeah. of the Fallen was that awful. one. That's that's one that it should have ended about. An hour before it did. Yeah, yeah I kept it might waiting have just been for way the, too long. Well, but. we went and watched it. I think we went and watched it in the theaters, and I. I just kept waiting for it to end, yeah. and then stuff kept happening. And oh you're like, so not not great. Not uh, great. definitely not the best of that series. Mm-mm. Number nineteen, Ghost Rider: Spirit of Vengeance. <laughs> this it, is the sequel. I, I, it, it, I they're not wrong. The first no. one wasn't great, <laughs> but the second one. Now was I have to say, I actually terrible. <laughs> I little miss controversial here. I actually did not hate the first one. I but I love Nikki Cage though so yeah I mean it, I tolerated it but didn't hate the first one the second one not so much yeah the second one was just not awful. Good. It was like awful. I said it, not good it, it's as if the people writing that one never watched the first one right mm-hmm. uh, it's just no continuity number eighteen the watch uh, based on this picture here it stars Ben Stiller Vince Vaughn uh, Moss I can't pronounce his name Richard Iowaity. Um, and Jonah Hill. It didn't show up okay. on, on Rotten Tomatoes at all. It's I, got that cast, and I, I think I, I would watch love it this now. I haven't seen it. I, I'm, I, I'm such a huge fan of Richard Iowati that I just. 
Oh, I want to watch it just for I, me now. I have recommended the IT crowd to so many people because it's such a great show. Even if you're not a nerd, you can appreciate the nerd culture in it. He and Noel Fielding are the sole purpose that I watch the Big Fat Quiz is mm-hmm. just on for the them. off chance that they might be in that episode because they're just, um, he's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah. So the quick blurb here about this movie, this is the second half of the second sentence. But critics seem to think the movie was nothing but an endless string of unfunny penis jokes with occasional moments of gross-out violence. Okay. That sounds like I need to watch that. Have they never seen a Ben Stiller movie before? Because that sounds like every Ben Stiller movie ever written. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Pretty much. Number 17, Dragon Ball Evolution. (laughs) Okay. This This is me being a bad nerd. I've never really watched Dragon Ball. Um, and the episodes I've seen, all I see is somebody going, ah, and powering up. Here's me being yeah, a worse nerd. You're not missing much. It's yeah. anime. It's crap. It's yeah. it's not my, the best. And I, I do my best to keep my mouth shut about it because my brother-in-law and sister-in-law actually love Dragon Ball. Yeah. And so, that's how they sort of got together. And uh, so I'm I guessing, appreciate it for them. I'm guessing none of us have seen this. No. So no, no. We, can't, no. we can't speak Can't to comment. That, so. No comment. I apologize. To all the anime lovers, but I just, I can't relate. So, number 16 is Seventh Son. Seventh Seventh Son. I watched this movie. Eh. Eh. Meh. Jeff Bridges. Uh, I mean, that was, yeah. I I have no idea. Basically, Mm -hmm. um, he. uh, 12% 12 on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. (laughs) Basically, the main character is the seventh son of a seventh son. son. Oh, is this based on a book? And I don't know. Um, and because of that, he's trained by Jeff Bridges' character to fight evil. And well, there's that. There's a biblical reference it, there in it, the well, seventh it, son of a seventh it, son. But it sounds like a book I read. There's a um, lot of books that have so. seventh son of a seventh yeah. son. So it could be anything. Yeah. But uh, you know, it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. one it one terrible, but one, it wasn't awesome. Yeah. Okay, 